In this video, we're going to cover purchasing. And specifically, we're going to go through a few examples. We're going to go through sending a purchase order. We're going to go through receiving the invoice or bill and also adding purchases for things that were unseen. We will touch on the accounting sync and integration as we go through, but there is another video that goes through this in much more detail and depth about this. So really just want to touch on the accounting integration a little bit as we go through for some context. First point to make is how we distinguish the difference between the two types of orders in Build Exact, because we do have separate videos for both of these types. So purchase orders is this video. And for us, a purchase order is anything outside of your business. So that's going to be things like suppliers and contractors, literally anybody that sends you an invoice. On the other hand, we have work orders, which are more internally focused. So work orders might be used for things like time sheeting or clocking hours by staff, um, use essentially like tracking costs, or maybe you have your own excavator and you essentially want to use a work order to take account of that cost. Um, that's really the biggest difference between those two. And another key point is that purchase orders go into the accounting software through the integration, whereas work orders don't. So again, this video is going to focus on purchase orders. So the first example we're going to go through is we're going to jump into the Windows category and we're going to grab this line here. So most of the time we're going to start this way by finding the item in the actual screen or items potentially that we want to put a cost against. And it's all started the same way. You just simply select them and you click here to say go order. And this will take you into what we call the ordering process, or i.e. an order can start its life as nothing, uh, can be unsent, and then you can go through and then send that to somebody. Um, then you can further receive the invoice or the bill for it. And if you need to, of course, you can cancel it and you can jump into the process at any point, i.e. there's definitely examples where you'll go straight in and just receive things. But this example here, we're doing it for Windows and we're going to send a purchase order and then we're gonna receive a cost against it. So I'm gonna go through and fill out this purchase order. Up at the top, there's a description and basically it just wants to know what it's all about. Now this single line here is solely so you can find it easily. The only exception to this is if you're doing a cost plus job, then we use that description on the customer facing invoice. So in that case, spelling is a little bit more important, but otherwise for now, again, just strictly for your own ter internal tracking purposes. Moving down, it'll have the contact details and it should on occasion automatically fill it out. Um, we have the attention, i.e. who it's going to, uh, supplier reference. Um, you don't really need to worry about that. We're gonna fill this in um, as you go, uh, date required. And this is just telling the supplier um, or whoever's putting it all together um, that basically when that uh, when those items are required. So instructions, um, this can really be anything you want. So for example, uh, it might be, you know, delivery via uh, John Street, or it might be, you know, when on site, please contact the supervisor or again, whatever else you really need there. Moving on down. So it's pulled the line through and it knows what the cost is and it knows what the item is. I can add extra notes to get anything. Uh, most commonly, these notes are used for, say, color selection or to feed people their quote numbers. So in this case, I'm going to do the second one here. And you can add extra lines at this point if you send a purchase order. And then you remember you need to, say, put an extra item on for this. Maybe it's something like delivery, um, maybe something you, could, you forgot to allow for, or really, again, anything else that might pop up. You can always add extra things, and I'm not going to in this case, but I do want to make a quick mention to say that if you do add extra items, the absolutely most important single thing to know and remember is you need to tell the build exact system which category this line goes into. Because you created a new item, it has no idea where that money is going to go to, and you need to tell it where that money will basically end up so that it can properly budget it. If you don't, um, you'll know about it right away because it will sit down at the bottom of your costing screen, as we'll see later on. Lastly, these two little boxes here. The first one shows cost when printing it. Um, so this is just a choice that you can have when you say, you know, look, uh, show the price or don't. Um, it's particularly good if it's a quote that you can show the prospect uh, or the person on the other hand. Um, you know, you're sending a list of items to the supplier and you can just buy off the catalog. It's probably less of their business what you've allowed for. 
this one here, um, this one you should know is, is really very rarely you ever need to touch it. So this, the order is GST free item or respond to what the contact is set to, i.e. the contact selection has a registered for GST option against each person. So if they weren't registered for GST, this should automatically turn on. And more or less, we want to mention it just to say, keep an eye out for it. Basically, uh, really, we're just looking for an instance where it's on by accident, and you'll just need to go back and fix the contact, say, yep, actually, this person does claim tax. But again, the majority of time, it really never, ever needs to be touched. Excellent. So now we can add a delivery and freight expenses as an allowance if you need to. And this just adds to the budget of this order here. And then we're going to say, yep, we're happy with it. You can go either save and close and then send it later or print it and then send it. Or you can do what I'm going to do now, which is save and send straight away. What it will do is it will put this in a kind of preview screen or a confirmation screen. So it doesn't send it out automatically. Um, you've just got to hit the send button here. And this is just filling out the email to go to the other supplier. You can absolutely add attachments at this point. And all of these are just coming from the details section of each of the jobs. Now we will put a tick in next to it to say, yep, it's been ordered. And you'll notice the status here has changed. And what's going to happen is I've sent this. And the next logical step is they'll send me back an invoice, probably for a deposit in this case. And I can go into the order from here. I can go on to the purchase orders and I can get it uh, into it from there. Or under jobs, there's also an order section that I can go into it that way as well. Now, I'm going to use this one. And what I'm really wanting to do is just push this status forward. So it's marked as sent. And you can go, yep. Uh, next up is I've received something. And it will pop open with what I call the accounting screen. Mainly we call it that because you can connect to your accounting system. And most of this screen is what your accounting system really wants to know about and what we will push across. But yeah, this is just all about the bill. So you can say, yep, this is my bill number. And this is when I got it. Again, your accounting system needs to know this. So let's just say uh, January as an example here. Um, uh, so in my examples here, I'm probably going to do a deposit. So I'd probably say deposit. And if there's nothing too significant to, to note, then don't worry about that. With the amount, it wants to know what actually happened. So you can say, let's say 0.1 for 10%, and it will calculate 10% automatically. However, more than likely, you've just got a round figure some, from someone where they've just gone one lot of, say, $700 for a deposit. And that's fine. Just type it in, whatever it actually says. If you ever need to do some rounding, you can do it uh, just down here to adjust a couple of cents and really just make life a lot easier. And then from here, you can go part received or fully received. And I'm going to say part received because I know this is just part of a larger order um, or I'm going to receive another bill against it later on. Having it fully received is essentially the end of the road. And we'll get to that later on here. If I scroll down, I'll see the invoice is put in. And I've got another option here to say, look, if everything's received, you can make it received here as well. I can tell build exact instead of it being part received, um, everything's fully done. So that's just if I click the wrong button, um, when I put the receipt in, you can easily toggle between them really, really easily. Okay, so we're going to save and close. And it's going to start to show the comparison of what we're doing here. So it started to track the actual cost of the $700. I can click on anything blue as mentioned in other videos. So the $700 and I've got this much left to spend and that equates to this much of our budget that we've gone through already. So we're gonna do that uh, comparison uh, line by line, category by category and ultimately overall um, down the bottom here, uh, which means this much of the budget has been spent and it'll show up at the very, very top and a little handy side note here is you can uh, use this arrow, uh, click it up to get more details about the breakdown. And this is just to show, for example, the breakdown of the purchase orders, the work orders, the change orders. Um, anything that's under there is just something you've manually keyed in. So just something to be aware of. You shouldn't really ever uh, be doing that, uh, but it's good to know um, otherwise if something has been manually entered. So the short answer there is for all the actual costs, it's really just uh, should be a type of order that you're putting through. Excellent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more. And um, 
what I'm going to say is I'm going to go back into the order and just add the second invoice. So I can go plus and I can do the remaining amount this much. Obviously, I'm taking this off my invoice. If you ever see a duplicate here, it's just trying to flag that you've already put the number in before. Might be another supplier's used it, or it might be you've already put the bill in. Um, and that's okay. You can just simply click on the duplicate here. It will open another screen and it will show you uh, bills that have that number. So you can just have a quick double check for yourself. So uh, I've got the bill number, the date, um, note the amount, and we can say received. And we're just going to say save and close. Note that each of those two bills will go to zero as separate items. And again, we're just giving us the summary here. It split those into separate expenses. And I use the same number, but typically your numbers will be different here. Excellent. Let's, um, let's do another example really quickly and really just want to cement the process here. So let's say I've got a permit. This is something I'm probably unlikely to send a purchase order for, and I just want to record this expense. So again, it's the exact same process. I can grab an order, which doesn't uh, make a huge amount of sense because I'm not sending an order, but as mentioned already, it's that order process that we want to be in. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to click received, and I'll be saying who it's from. And I'm just going to add a new supplier. So I'll just say the municipality or the county. And you can fill in as much as you want here. Obviously, the more the merrier. But the bare minimum it's going to want to know is the contact group, i.e. what type of supplier is it. It will want to know things like the email and the phone number and what your default accounting account type is, i.e. Uh, which account within your chart of accounts it's going to be a lot, uh, allocated to. This again should be going to the supplier. Again, there's another video on, on that that goes through in way more detail, but I'll just leave it like that for now. So we'll set, uh, set the municipality and we'll set the permit. And because I've never created an order in this case and sending it out, um, really none of this uh, other information needs to be filled out. I can just simply say what it is, who it is, and I can click receive straight away. We've been through the screen a few times already, but again, I'm just using the same number just over and over again. And I'll just say it's going to come in at $450 and four leave received. And so again, in this instance where you don't actually send a purchase order, you can really see it's a really quick little process. And ultimately the benefit is, is that we've recorded it in here. And if we again have that accounting integration activated, it will then ultimately send it off to our accounting system. One final example is what do we do when we have unforeseen costs? Um, something that's maybe not on the list. And we see people who will use this process if they get a bill and perhaps it's not really clear what the item matches to um, or they just want to put a whole cost against one of the categories rather than trying to go through and match it against specific items. So I've gone into the purchase order section and I'm going to click the plus here and the only real difference as to what we've done so far is that there's no line as it doesn't know what I'm buying. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. So I'm just going to go nails here because I'm just treating it like an unforeseen cost. And we'll just say um, came from this one and this one and this one. Not too worried about the actual supplier. I just want to show the example. But uh, nails because you, you know, always seem to run it out of them in the middle of the job. And if I was to go what it is and who it is and receive, then it would give me a quick little error saying, no, come on, you've got to order at least one thing. This can't be nothing. Um, so you just have to go in here and put in what you bought. So we do see a spectrum of people that uh, put different types of information in here. Some will put a ton uh, and some will just put almost nothing. And again, you can add as many lines or as few lines as you want. So let's say nails, um, $50 and I bought three boxes. And as mentioned already, the single most important thing here is telling it what category it goes into. Because otherwise it'll have really no idea where it needs to go and it'll just simply drop into the bottom of the costing screen when it puts it in. So adding in received as always, and I'll fly through this one because we've done it several times already. So number, uh, date, figures, which should be fine because we put them in a couple seconds ago and we're going to click received and save as close and i just want to wrap up uh, by saying that uh, again the uh, actual looks like as it goes in and it's this this line here where it's gone in with the zero dollar estimate value because it's a new line 
but it's still tracking it against the whole category. So just for tracking purposes, it all works completely fine.